Hello and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In our tutorial for today, we're going to learn how to have both the global leaderboard and the game leaderboard both in one game. The game leaderboard is showing all the current players in the game. When one of these players make it to the top 5 of all time greatest players, the next time they join the game, they're going to see their names here on the top players board. Let's now go to studio and see how we can do that. All right, so here we are inside studio. This is my top player's wall. As you can see, my top player's wall is just a regular wall with five text labels on the left to store the player's names and five text labels on the right to store the player's score. We do have a video on how to build this wall in one of our prior tutorials. In case you'd like to learn how to build this wall, you can refer to that video. And now let's take a look at the scripts inside the service script service. If you remember from our last lesson, we had two different scripts. We had the main script and we have the module script. Basically, the module script is just taking care of the set async and get async first. So instead of set async, we're using set database and instead of get async, we're using get database. Now let's go to the main script. Whenever the player leaves the game, we're writing the data to the data store using set database. And whenever the player enters the game, we're retrieving the data from the data store using access. I'm sorry, using get database. And this while loop here is just giving the player one point for every second that the player is in the game. Now let's add the code to load the top player's wall. So I'm going to declare a local variable up here, local. And let's call it wall. So my global leaderboard wall is inside the workspace. So let's get to that. So we're going to say game dot workspace dot global leaderboard wall dot surface GUI. All right, so now wall is going to represent that surface GUI here. And that's how I get to all my text labels. Now to get the data for the top five players, we have two options. Option number one is to read all your data from your data store, store them maybe into an array, and then you sort the array on your own. Option number two is to use an ordered data store where you can retrieve the top five players of all time directly from the ordered data store. So I prefer option number two. So let's go to our module script. Instead of get data store, we're going to use get ordered data store. You can see at the bottom here, I have inserted a new function. To get the sorted data from the data store, you use the function get sorted async instead of get async. Get sorted async, the first parameter is false, meaning it's going to be in descending order. True means in ascending order. And I'm asking it to put five entries per page for me. So in case there is more than five entries, then your first page is going to have five entries. And then the following page is going to have, you know, whatever you have after that. If Say if you have uh, 15, then you're going to have three different pages. Each page is going to have five entries. If you have 16, then you're going to have four pages. And the last page is going to have a single entry. All right. And I'm doing the same thing as we've done up there. We, we're putting this get sorted async inside the P core. And then we're checking for the success flag and for the data to be available. And if the data is available, we're going to return the current page, which, which is the first page, which contains the top five players, because we're asking it to sort it in descending order. If it's not successful or if there's no data, it's going to return nil. Now let's go back to the main script and we're going to call this new function. 
So I'm gonna go to the bottom here, and this is where we're gonna look the the wall, the top player's wall. So let's declare a local variable, local, and let's call it page because our function is gonna return a page with five entries in it. So let's say page equals to access database dot, and here's our new function that we have entered, get ordered database. We're gonna say if page, to make sure that our page is not nil, then we're gonna use four in i pairs to iterate through that array. For i comma entry in i pairs, our array is, is page two. Here we're going to declare a variable to reference to this p1 here. So we're going to say local, let's call it board p equals to wall. The wall is our surface GUI here. So wall, and we're going to wait for this label to be loaded. So wait for child. Our label is p1, but we don't want to hard code p1 in there. We want to concatenate p with the variable i, our counter i. So as it passed through the for loop, the first iteration i is going to be 1, so p concatenating with i is going to give us p1, which is going to give us the reference to this variable. On the second iteration, i is going to become 2, and it's going to become p2 here, so it's going to refer to this second variable. All right, so we'll do the same thing with the points, local, board let's call this one pt equals to wall wait for child p and this time actually it's gonna be pt here right so we're gonna get this first uh, uh points label the the text label for points here pt1 so it's gonna be pt dot dot I. All right, so those are gonna give us the reference to the two labels, the P1 and PT1. Let us now load those labels. Now, we're gonna load the, the player's name first. And remember, when we store the data into the data store, we're storing the user ID in there. So to get the player's name, we're gonna have to use the player's service and use the get name from user ID from user ID async. So let's go to the next line and we're gonna say board p dot text for the text label. We'll set it equals to players is our player service defined up here. And then we do colon get name from user ID async. We're passing in the uh, user ID. The user ID in this case is entry dot key. So remember our entry here, for each entry that is stored in the data store, there's a pair value, there's a key and there's a value, right? The key is the user ID, the value is the points. So on the next line, we're gonna look the points. We're gonna say board PT for the points dot text whoops, equals to entry dot value. Let us now do a quick recap. In this section of the code here, when the player leaves the game, we're writing to the data store. In this section of the code here, when the player enters the game, we're retrieving the data from the data store to load into our game leaderboard. And finally, in this section of the code down here, we're retrieving the data from the data store to load our global leaderboard. To do that, we're calling the get order database, which calls our function in our module script that uses the get sorted async, and it's returning a page with five entries in it. Coming back over here, so our page here is gonna be a page it's gonna be a, uh, an array with five entries in it. 
each entry is gonna be a key and value pair. So the key is gonna contain the user ID where we have to use the get name from user ID async to get the player's name from the player's user ID and the value is going to contain the player's point and we're, we're using both of those values to load our text labels on the wall the last thing I want to add here is I need to put a while loop here because as it is right now you see our global leaderboard is only loaded one time when the first player enters the game so we don't want that because if there are players in the game, the, the, the board is not going to be refreshed. So what I want to do is I want to put an infinite while loop here. While, let's wait for 10 seconds. Do. And we're going to put this uh, code inside that while loop. So now instead of having the wall loaded only one time when the first player enters the game it's gonna be refresh every 10 seconds but just keep in mind that when you score more points in the game your name is not gonna appear on the board until you leave the game because that's when we write the data the data into the data store and when you enter the game again uh, at a later time then you would see your name on the board if your name make it to the top five. All right, so now I'm gonna publish the game to Roblox and we're gonna test it with two players. And here we are inside the game. So let's take a look at what we have here. I have, So I have 10,000, more than 10,000 points and look at my score on the board is uh, 10,288. So I have, I have gained some points because I'm getting one point for every second that I'm in the game. But you can see that my points on the, the global leaderboard is not gonna change until I exit the game and come back in because we're only upload we're only writing data to the data store as the player leaves the game so right now in the data store i still have the old points in there let me go and grab some more score some more points here so now i'm gonna have 11 12 13 000. all right and now i'm gonna press leave to leave the game and come back in and let's see if my score get updated on the global leaderboard. Now let's go back in. I should have 13,000 and change on the global leaderboard. Let me go and check. And there it is. 13,370 and I have gained more points as I stay in the game. Alright, so again, this leaderboard is going to have up to five names, the top five players. In this case, we only have two players in this game so far and that's why you only see two players. Okay everyone, thank you so much for watching and this is how you build a global leaderboard and a game leaderboard together in one game.